In this video, we'll take a look at deploying a DBS210 MPP firmware with WebEx Control Hub. We're going to first start off with the actual DBS210. So what I did here is there's a document, Cisco DEC DBS210 manual reconfiguration procedure. So I went ahead and reset the unit to factory default, press reset button, location the bottom of the device for 15 seconds, and the light will show red. And right now I'm at the stage of logging in through the actual web GUI of the unit itself. One uh, critical thing to note is this uh, DBS210 and also the handset, I've updated the firmware. So if we take a look at the actual firmware version, this location right here, you'll notice it's running 500-01-0003-19 firmware. Timestamp 19th January 2022. So it is very critical if you're going to be onboarding a DBS210 DEC system to WebEx calling. Highly recommended to upgrade the firmware. We'll take a look at that in a few moments. There's been a number of different firmware changes over time um, and there's some critical notes to look at. So we'll basically go to the WebEx Help Center specifically on building and managing digital DEC networks and control hub. And today we're going to specifically be looking at the DEC DBS210 here. And also I, I have a uh, DEC 6825 phone. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go under Calling, Features, Deck Network. So basically, this is going to be site one. The name, I'm just calling it My Deck Net 51622. And then I'm going to actually use the same thing for the display name. Okay, it doesn't like that. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit shorter. And then we're going to be using the Cisco DEC 210 base station. And then from my access code here, I'm going to use 1155. So we should be good. We have the site location. We have the name. We have the handset display name. I'm just kind of using the same, a little bit truncated because of the character limitation. That's fine the type for the base station, which is a DEC 210, and then the default access code. So you definitely want to memorize this default access code because we'll need to use it a little bit later on. Okay, the next thing we need to do is enter in the MAC address of the actual DEC base station.
Okay, and I'm just going to verify. You may want to take a picture of the MAC address. It's actually quite small on the back of the deck, DBS 210. Okay, so it looks like we're, we're in good shape here. So let me go ahead and hit the next here. Okay, so for this, um, I'm going to go ahead and, okay, so I'm going to give this to user number two. Okay, so it looks like we're good as far as the WebEx control hub. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go back and log into the unit itself. So let's do that right now. I'll kick this out a moment ago. Okay, let me go in and just save this for right now. And then we want to go ahead and go back to this document. So the document here is the uh, Cisco DEC DBS 210 manual reconfiguration procedure. So we're going to basically go into the web GUI, which we just authenticated under management default base station. Okay. And then we want to go to management configuration server address. And we're going to select the United States, the SIP flash server. So let's copy that. So management configuration server address. So management configuration server address. Okay. And we will go ahead and save and reboot. This uh, may take a number of minutes. And uh, again, keep in mind, I have actually already updated the firmware on both the base station and the uh, handset. So I'm expecting this to probably take somewhere in the neighborhood of like four or eight minutes or a little bit longer. So we'll kind of wait here and observe what happens. And what I'll do is I'll go back to the actual WebEx control hub while we're waiting for this. Okay, I'm going to go into the uh, devices and then into the um, My Deck Net with a date. So this is uh, basically the uh, construct of the uh, Deck Net we're deploying. And it's uh, going to take a number of minutes for it to register. If you notice, it's showing um, zero register at this point of time with the MAC address on my base station, which is fine. Um, it's going to take some si time for it to register. Okay, so that's actually a good sign that we cannot log into the actual base station. Um, what typically happens is the uh, device, when it onboarded or provisioned within WebEx calling it pulls down a XML config file okay so we can see the actual um, base station right now hasn't registered as of yet so we'll give it a few more minutes for the registration again I'm expecting about four somewhere between four to eight minutes however it may take longer While we're waiting here for the onboarding to complete of the DBS 210, one of the items to consider is if this is the first device for WebEx calling that you're adding to this network segment 
And if you run into issues, let's say 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes passes by and there's nothing occurring, the device doesn't appear to be onboarding or provisioning within WebEx calling, there's a very good document. I'll leave a link in the description on the video. It's a WebEx Help Center document, Port Reference Information for WebEx Calling. There's a list of different services that are using different TCP UDP ports and also specific public routable IP addresses that need to be whitelisted. So this is definitely, and also domains, related domains, a document you want to take a close look at. Also, you want to take a look at your firewall logs to see if there's an indication in the firewall logs that if it's blocking or dropping something associated to the DBS 210 or any related 3PCC phone you're deploying in this network VLAN or network segment, if you will. So that would be one item. Um, if, again, it's taking extended period of time, you're not really see, seeing any errors per se on the device, but it's not moving forward. So that is something to uh, take a look at. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and see if we can register the actual DBS210 phone. So let me go ahead and make sure that I'm covering this correctly. So what I did is I just typed in the access code into the phone itself. And then it's going to attempt to register. It's going to, so it just registered to the actual base station. Okay, I'm going to hit the OK button here. Okay, so we can see now we have basically the um, information we configured in WebEx Control Hub on the unit itself. So I'm going to go into WebEx Control Hub right now, and we're going to take a look at the base station. Okay, so it shows it's registered in WebEx Control Hub. And then let me go back to the base station. So let me go back to the handset. So manage handset. Okay, so we're going to view status of the handset. Okay, so it also shows us registered. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do a test call over to this phone. Okay, we're going to attempt to make a quick call here, test call. Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. Okay, so we just made a test call here. So as you can see, the um, actual provisioning of the DBS 210 can be done fairly straightforward. Um, the one thing, again, I want to keep in mind is that the firmware was updated on this unit. So that's going to be the next thing we're going to actually take a look at here is um, really quickly I want to talk about the actual firmware considerations. So if we go to the section on the Cisco site for the IP DAC 210 multi-cell base station with multi-platform firmware. So this is on the downloads homepage, collaboration endpoints, IP phones, IP phones with multi-platform firmware, IP DEC 6800 series with multi-platform firmware, and then IP DEC 210 multi-cell base station with multi-platform firmware. So the firmware the unit is using right now is 5.0.1. There is a critical note here to be aware, and I'll read this verbatim. 
Upgrade to 5.0.1 is supported only from 4.8.1 SR1. If DBS 2.10 or DBS 1.10 is running firmware 4.7.1 or 4.8.1, it must be upgraded to 4.8.1 SR1 before upgrading to 5.0.1. If DBS 2.10 is running 4.5 version, it must be upgraded to version 4.6 in factor reset mode before upgrading to 4.8.1 SR1. So there are some caveats here, but the focus of this video is really the onboarding or provisioning of the DBS 210 with WebEx Control Lab. So as you can see, that part is straight, fairly straightforward. For the firmware upgrades, um, definitely take a look at the release notes. At the time you're viewing this video, most likely this information would have changed. But in any case, thank you for viewing the video. Hopefully this helps you with the provisioning of the DBS 210 MPP firmware with WebEx Control Lab. Thank you.